Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Please take a moment to look around because this venue is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. I love the Dominican Republic. I love its beautiful landscapes as well as the warmth of its people. Anybody who lives here or has visited knows that this is paradise. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Chile to a Chilean father and a Dominican mother. And when we were younger, we used to travel around quite a bit. I lived here in the Dominican Republic for a few years. Then I went to the US, off to Switzerland, back to Chile, to university in Australia. And finally, I spent my last few years in Dubai, of all places. Throughout these experiences, I had to adapt and overcome, and I learned a few lessons which I wanted to share with all of you today. Number one, take risks. Get out of your comfort zone, and I promise you, you will grow. Number two, people around the world are much more similar than most of us care to believe. Three, it's not about how many millions of dollars you sign in deals, but rather the millions of people that you can positively impact through your work and your efforts. That's what keeps you going. Thank you. Finally, what I did realize was that I love this place. Thank you. When I was younger, I used to deal with quite a bit of anxiety, like many of us here. And the antidote to that anxiety for me was the second that I arrived in this country. I actually have a horrible memory, yet my longest lasting and favorite memory is the second that I arrived here and walked down those steps from the airplane onto the tarmac, and I looked around at beautiful blue skies and green horizons. The Tejera side of my family also allowed me a sense of belonging. I could feel the Dominican Republic running through my blood. For these main reasons, and these learnings and lessons throughout my life is that in December of last year, I actually decided to move away from Dubai and come here to live. When I got here, I knew three things. One, I wanted to live here. Two, I wanted to create a new chapter of my life, go with the flow and see what happens. Let life take a new path for me. And three, I wanted to have a positive impact on this country, just like the positive impact it had on me. So when I arrived in the Dominican Republic, I knew that I wanted to look for opportunities and potential, but the issue was I literally saw them everywhere that I looked. And as life happens, it was on a day like any other that I decided to go to the beach with a friend of mine and I would be faced with a challenge that would change everything. I was about to become obsessed with this new challenge. And when I say obsessed, it wasn't just speaking about it, but rather I spent months researching this problem and I reached out to every single person that I could that knew about this issue to learn a little more. Because when I arrived to the beach that day with my friend, it wasn't these turquoise waters that I saw, but rather it was a sea of sargasso, a brown seaweed that was destroying this beautiful turquoise water that I loved and made me feel comfortable. And rather it was creating the water murky and unswimmable. Then I looked around to try to find a construction site because I heard and then I saw trucks and excavators running up and down the beach. And they were building mountains filled with the seaweed, as well as my Dominican sand. Then I got hit by this horrific smell that would follow me around to every single beach that I went to and still follows me today. 
I looked back at locals in dismay, trying to keep that smile that we all knew very well. At tourists lying on their daybeds, trying to relax, yet thinking to themselves, this is not what I signed up for. My country seemed to be invaded and it was being destroyed. And what I saw was not a solution. And in that moment, I took it upon myself to do better. When I got back home, the first thing I did was look up its name. Sargasso or Sargassum. The first thing that popped up was, this is the biggest algal bloom in the whole world. Oh boy. Experts were saying that was what was a seasonal issue would become a year-long problem. This seaweed that in the open water would provide a healthy and secure ecosystem for marine animals would immediately turn on us the second that it arrived on our coasts. And two issues became very clear. One, this was a threat to our ecosystem. Upon arrival, Sargasso would suck up all of the oxygen and light, killing our fish, turtles, and corals without discrimination. The second issue, the Caribbean had already been affected by Sargasso in its tourism industry. A tourism industry which, as we know, provides here in the Dominican Republic and across the region jobs and opportunities for many. Yet all hope was not necessarily lost. As I looked around, I saw people that were doing research and development and trying to figure out a new solution to this big problem. One of the first technologies that we saw was the barrier. If only it were that easy. This beast literally laughed at us as it jumped over, went under, or through the side of these barriers, and it wouldn't be stopped. Even if we did, try to stop it, it would let out this brown coloring into the water, dirtying it and changing the landscape. Yet, it seemed that all was not lost. There was a light at the end of the tunnel. Sargasso told me that perhaps I had misunderstood it. It wasn't just a problem, but rather, it was an opportunity to create new industries in this country. I thought to myself, after 10 years of dealing with this problem, you're telling me that we could do something with this? The answer was much more surprising than I could have ever expected. Not only were homes being built utilizing Sargasso, but you could also create paper, bioplastics, biofuel. Its components could even be used for cosmetics and medicine. And so my new aim became very clear. Find the best possible solution to this problem in the most sustainable manner. And it was around this time that I met a very good group of people both here in the Dominican Republic and in the US that between them had over 150 years of experience in technology, innovation, business development, not only that, but they were already paired up with MIT, the MIT, to try to find new technologies and solutions to our problem. Our goals were aligned and our objective was very clear. Rather than fight against Sargasso, why not bring in this new friend and try to create new industries and opportunities, not only for the country, but for the region? And so our first technology came about, the literal collection module, or the LCM system for short. A cost-effective system that was also adaptable to fishing boats here in the Dominican Republic. This allowed us on one hand to be able to scale operations to a degree that we could deal with the actual scale of Sargasso itself, but more importantly, it allowed us our first opportunity to have proper community impact. Our fishermen suffered from an informal employment sector and were directly affected by the arrival of Sargasso itself. So why not 
Take these skilled workers that know our waters better than anybody else and use that knowledge to survey this problem and find the best solution. Why not provide them with a formal employment sector as well? After a lot of trial and error, we were finally successful in our first objective. Get it away from our beaches. But there was another question which begged to be answered. What to do now with this sargasso? And so we did what anybody should do. We asked for help. We collaborated not only at the international level, but also at the local one to try to find these solutions. Not only including the private sector, but also the public one. And not only working with companies, but also our communities. And so, right around this moment, Sargasso came knocking at our door and made us an offer that we couldn't refuse. It told us that they could not only be utilized to create products or provide energy for us, but it could also capture CO2. More so, it whispered in our ear that it did not want to come die on our shores, but rather it was pushed here. And so we had a new mission. Why not stick a bunch of cool technology and systems on a very big boat and try to interject the sargasso before it arrived to our beaches? Why not stop it from rotting and ruining our ecosystems and our tourism industry and rather give it its own natural end at the bottom of the ocean? Scientists say that the real lungs of the world is not the Amazon, but rather our oceans. So we want to take advantage of that, give Sargasso a better and more natural place. And through that, we're not only allowed to have an impact on country or region, but moreover, we would be able to create an impact at a global scale. By capturing this CO2, we would be able to provide our own little grain of sand towards the mitigation and fight against climate change. But as we are, we couldn't stop ourselves. We looked locally for other issues that we could solve with our technologies. The LCM system could be utilized to create a better ecosystem in another environment that was historic here in the Dominican Republic, Rio Sama. When we first began this journey, people might have thought that we were a little bit crazy. But today, standing here, I thank them. Comfort is overrated and failure is an opportunity to learn. And so before I leave, I wanted to leave you with one last quote that my grandfather used to say all the time, in hopes that it inspires some of you to find something that you love and fight for it with all your might. Do what you love and love what you do. The worst that can happen is that you fail. Yet if you fail, you'll probably learn something. And if you learn something, we'll be one step closer to increasing our shared prosperity. Thank you.